today we're going to be delitting the Ryzen R3 2200G APU. We already did some content on this, like the discussion on the sleep timer bug, which was in fact not talking about liquid nitrogen scores, because that needs to be said. Uh, so we're going to be delitting this today. As I understand it, this APU and the other one, the 2400G, actually use thermal paste instead of solder. So that's a bit different for AMD. These are low-end parts, so in terms of making it cheaper, that does make sense. Uh, I think we're just going to try and heat this thing up in the test bench and then cut it with a razor basically around the edges and see if it comes open. And then from there, we'll be able to do some liquid metal testing. So this may be a two-part video. Part one's probably this. And then part two will be the thermal testing, although they may go up out of order. We'll see. Before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club, makers of the new $5 shave shower shave starter set. The kit includes the Dollar Shave Club executive razor, bearing the heft of any high quality tool, and also includes reloadable cartridges. The $5 kit includes everything you see on the screen now, like the body wash and shave butter, and can be refilled for a few dollars a month. This deal is available for $5 exclusively using our link below or dollarshaveclub.com slash gamersnexus. Okay, so the plan here, I don't have a heat gun, we can go buy one, but what I'm gonna try first is putting it in the, the test bench with no cooler and letting it heat up to, uh, TJ Maxx is 95, so we'll let it heat up to there, pull it out and see if that's enough to get it somewhat malleable under there uh, so that we can try to de-lid. So that's the plan. And if that doesn't work, then I'll grab a heat gun hopefully somewhere local. See if this even lets me boot without a cooler. Temperature 51, okay. Oh, that's getting hot, okay. Let's call it there. I think that 65 number's incorrect. So I'm gonna pull this out and see if we can get this started. Now my colleagues at, uh, at Pro High Tech, Russian site, we've worked with them a few times in the past. I believe they already did this and they used a heat gun and a vice and I have one of those and I get the other one, so if that proves better, we'll do that. I think I'm also going to be on their channel for a discussion on something. For anyone who speaks Russian, I guess, which I don't. Okay, so this is, we have silicone adhesive along the edges. It's very hot to hold right now. And I think we have a shot of what the adhesive looks like. So all I'm doing is trying to cut that without also cutting myself. and the the risk here is that if you like push this in too far, you can hit SMDs like or surface mount devices like capacitors or resistors, things like that, and uh, kill or damage the APU. So we're going to be a bit cautious. So this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, I, this exact or whatever it is knife. I'm just shoving the razor blade just under the silicone adhesive and above the substrate. And we're going to try and not scratch the substrate, obviously, or slide too far under the IHS and damage stuff. So right now my objective is just loosening the adhesive. Definitely getting silicone adhesive out of there. Okay, a little more and then I'm going to heat it up again. Oh, there's a little bit of play, but not much. Let's see what Pro High Tech did. It's weird, they don't like really show a lot of the process. Oh, a rag, that's smart. It looks like this one's clamping the substrate and this one's I think we just got it. Can you see that? Separated a little bit on the top. Hopefully it didn't damage the substrate or anything in the process. Oh yeah, that's definitely, look at that, sweet. Well, that's exciting. Now, there's still risk that I destroyed something, so let's uh, try, try and be cautiously optimistic here. It might not be functional after this. 
And you could have hit an SMD, could have damaged some of the substrate or the pins. Uh, there's a lot of variables. But it's only $100, so. So it's two sides that are loose. All I'm doing now is lifting it up on the loose corner and then using the knife to get it up in the other corners. There it goes. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now time to see if we destroyed it. Okay, well that looks promising. Let's bring it back up and see if it works. Okay, so it was deloaded successfully. Well, we think. I haven't booted yet. And uh, there's your thermal compound. So it is in fact using thermal paste. Not that that was really any question at this point. And uh, also interestingly, the IHS inside has a bit of a raise up to meet the die. So uh, we're just gonna clean this off. I'm gonna clean this silicone adhesive off the sides. You know, we probably should just try and boot and see if it even turns on first before going full liquid metal. So let's do that first. I'm just gonna, all I'm gonna do is reassemble this as it's meant to be, put it in the system, hold my thumb on the IHS and see if it turns on. And I, I'm gonna hit it with air first, make sure there's no metal fragments or anything like that. Not that there should be, but pins look okay. That's the advantage of PGA is that it is actually very durable. So uh, the way I remember this socket is that dot in the corner aligns with the triangle here. So it'll actually just go on like that. It doesn't need to go back the same way. That's pretty important. Let's see if it boots. I need to plug in the display before I scare myself and think it doesn't work. Oh, we definitely got Acer's logo. Come on, BIOS. Okay, yep, we got a white LED. I need to shut this down, it's getting too hot. Yeah, okay, good enough for me. Hopefully that's enough to know that it still works. Let's start with the compound. It's turned into a rock at this point. That looks pretty damn good. Okay, so this thermal paste can become part of my uh, plug Gamers Nexus anti-static mod mat available at store.gamersnexus.net slash this you have to be a bit more careful with. Ideally, not use a fingernail to get compound out, but whatever. Okay. IHS thickness. Turned it off. 3.15 millimeters thick. Is that 17 maybe? It's like 17.5 or something. 17.5 by maybe nine or 10, somewhere in there. All right, so. Let's do this. Let's put liquid metal on here and get it into a test bench and see how it performs. So I'm gonna use Thermal Grizzly Conduct or not. Uh, there's a lot of, I've been using this one a lot, so there's already some kind of spilled out. Might even be able to use what's already on here too. Yeah, for sure. I don't even have to get any out of the tube. Okay, so this stuff's worked reliably. Uh, you know what, we also need to scrape some of this um, silicone adhesive off. So what's the order of operations here? Definitely scrape adhesive first. I can, I typically leave it on the substrate and just pull it off of the IHS with Intel because that's sufficient. There's like a one to three degree difference beyond that. So let me get all this off here first and then we'll do the liquid metal. Wow, that's awesome. Normally I can't get away with that on Intel stuff. I think theirs goes on a little thicker maybe. Jeez. What's that subreddit? Mildly uh, satisfying or something like that? I think, that <laughs> I think this constitutes a post there. Okay, that's good. This one I might leave alone. I typically leave it alone on this layer as a guide. It's a little bit thicker towards the edge here, so I may end up removing that, but I think we're good though. Okay, so the plan is liquid metal. All 
All right, cool. Pretty good. So this is to protect the service mount components from spillover. If the liquid metal spills over and contacts these, it can short it. Typically, that's not deadly. It'll just fail to boot. You might smell some smoke, but most likely it's fine, and it'll just uh, it'll just electrically short and fail to boot, boot or or have issues with uh, weird behaviors, things like that. So by covering these nail polish, you do need to check your ingredients, to make sure it's not going to hurt anything. We've written articles about that in the past. But covering it with the right kind of nail polish will protect it from spillover, creates kind of a moat or a wall. And then if there is any spillover, it's not going to connect the SMD. It'll connect to the nail polish, uh, at which point we're basically protected. OK, that's pretty good. All right, that's looking pretty damn good. It's not too liquidy. It's not too much. Pretty thin layer. So yeah, it looks good. There might be a bit of spillover. I'm not sure how this IHS will behave with liquid metal because it's got this protrusion that'll come down and meet the dye. Uh, presumably, it'll push a bit of it off the sides. But that's OK. We got some protection on it, so it should be all right. And now for resealing. So just going to get the dust off the pins. And we're using the, uh, the old silicone adhesive as a guide. Again, tends to be pretty small effect on thermals. All right, I think we're good. OK. This is an awkward angle. Looks good. OK, time to test it. So uh, that's it. That's our delitting process for the R3 2200 APU. And we have the 2400G that just came in. That's 2200. I already ran all the pre-dismantling thermal tests. So we have all the thermal paste data. Now I just need to run it with that liquid metal. The thermal grizzly conduct knots, what we're using. See how it does, if it even works. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll be back with a second video with all the results. Should be filming today. So you'll see it pretty soon. Oh, well, you may even see it before this part. I don't know. Depends on our findings. So uh, yeah, check back. Make sure you subscribe because we have lots of cool content like this coming up for these APUs and other content for uh, just kind of some mods I have ideas for. And patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. You go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or one of our mod mats on back order. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.